Hey, so I'm, I'm going to talk about data, visualiz data visualization with Vue.js. It's not really a talk about data visualization. It's more a talk about Vue.js. It's just quite a nice way uh, of introducing it. So my name's Callum. Uh, I'm the lead front-end developer at a company called Samnos. Uh, we do a lot of data visualization, and we use Vue, hence the talk. Uh, I've also written a book on Vue called Vue.js Up and Running, uh, which if you like the talk, you should check it out. So I'm going to start the talk with a, a couple questions. Who's used Vue before here? Three people, great. I'm speaking to the right people. Um, and who knows what SVG is? Most of you, cool. Who's written SVG from scratch using, uh, using code? Cool, two of you. I'm definitely talking to the right people. So SVG, it's an XML-based vector image format. Uh, it's an open standard by the W3C. It's been around since 1999. Uh, basically lets you write images um, using code instead of uh, bitmaps, loads of pixels. Uh, so this image is on screen, this is a PNG. So if we zoom in loads, it's pretty blurry. Um, whereas the next one... Zoom out. It took a while. I don't know what happened there. Uh, the next one, this one's the SVG one. So if we zoom in, we can see it's like nice and crisp. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it before, by the way, this is the view logo. And in code form, this is the view logo. So it's pretty small. Uh, it, it, it's, it sends to the browser really quickly. Uh, and it's really easy to play with. Um, so next, let's look at some uh, let's look at some view. So how many have you used Angular before? Quite a few of you. Or really, any templating language should be fairly familiar with this syntax. Um, so at the top left, we've got our H, uh, we've got our template, and at the top right, we've got our JavaScript. So what this is doing. Um, is it's looping through. So on the right, we're defining chart data, which is an array of data. It's an array of numbers. And on the left, we're using uh, our v4 directive to loop through the array. Um, it creates a new paragraph element for every single item in the array. Um, and then inside, we're using interpolation to say we want to output the value um, in every paragraph element. So you can see here, we've got we've got our paragraph elements output by view. So next, let's leave you alone for a bit and go look at SVG. So this, this is SVG, it's XML. You can, put it in your, uh, you can put it in your documents directly. You don't have to load it as a .svg image. Um, and here we've just got a black rectangle. We've defined our SVG element. Uh, and inside we've got our rect element, which is a rectangle. So we've given it a width and a height and an x and a y position. And it's just a black, black rectangle, like you can see on the bottom. Uh, but that's a bit boring. So let's make it a nice orange beige color. Okay. Um, so, so here we just added a fill attribute, uh, which is giving it a color. So let's go back to view. Um, so here we've got the width and the height and the x and the y. We just hard coded that. Uh, but let's say we want to get that from our JavaScript. So here we've just wrapped. Um, uh, we, so we've gone back to this similar example as before. We've got our view, which is saying, OK, I want to work on the chart element, which in this case is the SVG. Um, and we've defined our width, height, x, and y using numbers um, in, the data attribute, uh, in the data property. So what we're doing now is we're using the vbind directive to say we want to bind the width and the height and the x and the y positions to the value from the object. Uh, so it's basically the exact same, it's the exact same rectangle, but powered using JavaScript, which probably isn't a great idea if you just want a rectangle on a page. Don't use JavaScript. But if you want to, if you want to make something more interactive or more powerful, then this is definitely uh, the way to do it. So this is the vbind directive. It might, it looks a bit wordy to write vbind every time. So they've, uh, they've given us a little shortcut. You can just not write vbind. You can start with a colon. Um, and this does the same thing. So here, we've still got width is width. And then we're getting 200 from there, uh, from the data object. So that's, that's a rectangle. Uh, but So let's go back to v4, uh, the directive we looked at before, and start making a little bar chart. So there's a few new things on this slide. Uh, I'm going to talk them through one by one. So 
first, there's the, the G element. The G element in SVG is the, it's kind of like the equivalent of div in HTML. It doesn't really do anything, but you can put stuff inside it. Um, so, uh, so we're using v4 on the g element, so it's outputting the g element a few times. Each one of them has a rectangle and a text element in. Um, and we also, we, we can't use x and y on g elements, we have to use transforms, but it's, it's, it's a similar idea. So it's being translated zero, zero pixels across and then down i times 40. So i, if you look back at the v st v4 statement, is the index of that uh, array element. So basically every single one is being moved down another 40 pixels and we're getting a load of rectangles below each other. We've also introduced a new t text element. It's just how you make text um, in SVG. It's pretty simple that one. Um, so we haven't... Um, cool, so next... Sorry. So next, um, I'm, let's, let's, let's program the width. Um, because previously we just had, uh, previously they were all the same width, it's not looking like a bar chart yet. So to make the width, we're going to just, um, we're going to make it, so we're going to, uh, so you don't just have, you can't just, in vbind you don't just use variables, you can also put JavaScript statements. Uh, so here we're, we're doing some maths where we're taking 500 pixels, which we're going to say the max width is, uh, 20, uh, and then we're going to say the max number of the chart data is 20. So basically we're working out the width as a proportion of the maximum number. So we've just given it a width. Uh, but this, this is, it's getting a bit wordy in the template now. So let's talk about, let's talk more about the view object. Um, so right now we just looked at how you can get data from the object into the template. But if you do that for everything, it'll, it'll, your template won't be very nice. Um, so, so there's, there's ways. Um, so on the object and the view objects. So we've, what we've seen so far is we've seen the L property, which says what we want to work on, and we've seen the data property, which says what data we want to apply. Um, but let's look at a way of adding some more stuff. So, um, so let's look at methods first. Um, so here, remember the last slide, we put um, 500 divided by 20 multiplied by value in the template. But here, we've moved it to a method. Um, so in the template, now instead of doing the math, we're just calling bar width value, which is being passed into the method, it's calculating the value, it's passing it back to the template, and outputting exactly the same thing to the page. Um, Yep, so that's, that's methods. Uh, now let's look at computer properties. So I've hard-coded the 20 there, but as the maximum value of chart data. Um, but we, don't, we, we could make another method, so we'd pass in chart data and work out the maximum value, pull it back in. But instead there's a better way to do it. We've got computer properties. Um, so computer properties, can you see that at the back? Yeah. Cool. Computer properties are kind of like halfway between methods and the data. So the data we access, it can't, we can't really, it doesn't change um, based on the values of other stuff. And methods, are fun they're basically functions. We call them every time, they evaluate every single time. Computer properties are halfway between the two. We access them as if they're properties of the data object, but they're executed as functions. So here you can see uh, in the template, uh, sorry, so here we can see we're calling the method. Uh, I'm going to go back a step because I didn't explain this. So, so here we've got this dot chart width. Um, so this dot chart width, it, it's referring to the chart width from the data object. So everything that you could access using chart width in the template, you can access using this dot chart width anywhere else in the view object, um, which is like a nice way of calling methods and computer properties from each other. So here in, in, the, in the method, um, I've hard-coded, uh, I've added the, um, the width and the height into the data object um, so, that, so that we can, um, so that I don't have to hard-code that value every time. Um, so also, so then, let, yeah, let's go back to the computer property. Um, so here we've got the computer property, which we call just the same as if it's a data value, but then, it executes something to work out the value. So we can see it's looking at our array of numbers. Um, 
and it's working out the maximum value, returning that. The, the advantage of the, so methods and computer properties look pretty similar, but they ha behave quite differently. Um, so here, here's like an illustration of how it, yeah, so that's just, you can see the top one is a function, the bottom one behaves as if it's just a property of the data object. Um, but in addition to the syntax difference, they also behave differently. So you can demonstrate this by calling them multiple times. So methods, every time you call them in a template, um, it'll, evaluate, it'll evaluate it. Um, so it'll call the method three times. But if you, every time you call a computer property, unless, the original, unless one of the values in it has changed, it'll only be called once. Um, so here we can see that the, com the method has been called three times, but the computer property has only been called once, and then the value is being cached. Sorry. I've just recovered from a cold, so my mouth's quite dry. Um, cool, so next. Next. Um, sorry, my speaking notes are wrong. It threw me a second. What's changed on this slide? I think I accidentally put the same slide in twice. Um, yeah, anyway. So, <laughs> that was weird. Not, not yet. <laughs> so, so cool. So, I, uh, if I've got time, there's a couple more things that I couldn't really show in Keynote because they're more interactive things. Um, so, I'll just bring up Copen. Cool. The first thing I wanted to show is events. Um, so uh, the event syntax in Vue is quite nice. It's um, so I'll rem it's all right. So what I'm doing here is we've had an event. Um, so it uses the vion directive, uh, which we're passing click to vion as an argument. So now when we click on this, it calls the handle click method, and in the handle click method, it's just updating the chart data with some random data. Um, generated here. So we can see when we click it that it changes. And this, this demonstrates something really nice uh, in Vue um, in that it's, everything is reactive. So we're changing, we're changing the chart data which in turn is causing the bar width to update and Vue's handling all this internally. Uh, it's not like React where, um, where we're changing this, where we're making a new state, we're mutating the state in Vue. It's like a very fundamental difference between React and Vue. React, you create a new object, you don't mutate the old object. Whereas Vue, you may mutate the old object. Um, it's, it's a, it took me a while to get used to, but it's actually really nice now. Um, and it means that just when you change one thing, everything changes automatically. It's really nice. Um, so also, Vion is also another quite used thing. So this one has a shortcut as well. Um, we can just delete that, replace it with an at, and, uh, with an at sign and it still works. Cool, and the other quick demo, I don't think I've got time to fully explain it, but uh, you can also animate things really nicely with Vue, uh, which is another really big difference between Vue and React, in that, ignore that, I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> um, Vue is really, so in React, I haven't used React in a couple of years, so I might be explaining this wrong, but in React something has a state, and it's got a state, and then it's got another state, and there's no concept of being between states, from what I remember, and I've been told. Um, but where, with Vue, uh, it's a lot easier to transition between stuff. I don't think I've got time to explain it fully. I just wanted to show you, because it's really nice and a good example. Um, what I will show you, though, is how to fix this. So with Vue, similar to most template engines, we've got filters. So you can see we've got a filter here. We pass it, uh, so call it round. We pass it a number, it rounds it. Um, and now we get a lot smoother animation than the last one. Cool, and I'll just go back to my slides, but that is the end of the talk. <laughs>